Listen, man, Nate won his last fight. Nate won his last fight by submission, man. It's not like he's completely unfounded for him to get a title shot. He almost knocked out Leon, and then he won by submission over Tony Ferguson. I think he deserves a title shot. Bilal, you're going to have to sit one out. That would be so f What are you doing with your dress? It's like, well, I'm lifting it up for my man, you know? Definitely going to be doing a lot of that later. God, this is so ridiculous. So I'm not saying Layla Anna Lee is a bad manager. And I'm not saying that Ian Gary is making bad decisions. I'm just saying that if they're going to take specific actions, you need to do it very cautiously. Like as an example, if someone gives you the bright idea to create photographs showing how sick you were when you had pneumonia, what you should definitely do is be surgically careful that when you take said fake photos, there are no giveaways that they are fake photos or else someone might think that you were faking that you were sick because why would you take pretend photos of how sick you were if you really were sick, right? So like I, I would say that someone getting caught taking pretend photos of being sick, all of a sudden people are gonna be like, wait, was he really faking it? Now, if someone was conspiracy minded, they might wanna look into fake photographs of the moon landing. I'm just saying, you might wanna look at that and then ask yourself, why would they take fake photos of the moon landing? What Provably fake photos of the moon landing if they really went to the moon. <laughs> I don't know, just something I was just thinking about while I was filming this video. You know, something else I was thinking about is what Joff Neal should wear to the press conference when they inevitably face off for their fight. And you should definitely listen to this. And if you know Joff Neal, you need to send him this video because he has to do this because it'll be the greatest thing ever. Like I told you guys when I broke the story that he was not going to be fighting in that UFC that he had pulled out and people don't know yet. I had heard that he really was very ill. So as far as I know, he had pneumonia. Now, how would you get me to question a story that ended up being true from a very solid source? I would say a great way to get me to question it would be to put out photos of you being sick over multiple days that get proven to be completely fake. So that's what Ian Gary did. Uh, or let's just say at the very least, there's a very suspicious detail that I'll share with you. So I can't say for sure they're fake. But if they're real, then we've got other questions to ask. So we're going to look at that. And then we're going to look at uh, Colby Covington because he stepped up his game. Colby Covington wants Ian Gary and he is going to target him and his wag wife. Colby's words, Colby's words. And I think this is going to be very entertaining. So we're going to look at that. Also, we have news on Conor McGregor and his potential comeback because Dana White said he's going to meet with him in Dubai and Conor also posted something on Instagram yesterday, which I think he subsequently took down, but I scream grabbed it. <laughs> I screen grabbed it. So I'm going to show you what he did. And uh, it is very notable because it talks directly about who he wants to fight because again, he is saying he doesn't want to fight Chandler now. Again, I, I don't even know what to make of that, dude. I really don't. I don't know if he's messing around with Chandler's brain or if he is just, I mean, at this point, it's just cruel, you know? Like you're posting things. I This is the moment I realized I don't want to fight Michael Chandler. You're like, dude, you know Chandler's just sitting here waiting for you. Chandler's not talking trash about you. He's never done anything except be a professional. And you're like, you're still, you're tormenting him while he hasn't been able to fight waiting for you, billionaire. I mean, whatever, hundreds of millions of dollars running around the world doing whatever you want. It's like, come on, dude. You know, Connor knows I always root for him, but this is just mean. Okay. It's just mean. So that's what we're going to do in that order. So buckle up. Now let's start right here. Hi, my name is Ian Gary and I have a very important message to send to my fans about when I was sick. And so let's take a look at this and see if there's anything that, you know, jumps off the page to you guys. Uh, so casual MMA posted this. So here's the post. All right, let's just go ahead and read this together and just marvel at how well Ian Gary is managing this situation. Fight week didn't go as planned. Influenza developed into pneumonia as I dropped weight. And for the first time in my career, I was pulled out by a UFC doctor flying home. I met so many fans, flew out specifically to see me. F, this is not how I wanted to meet you. I wanted to put on a show more than anything. Thank you for all of your blah, 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 blah. I was very, very sick. All right, so, and then he posted this. He's like, look at, look at me, you guys. I am sick. I am sick beyond belief. I'm in the doctor's office and I am sick. See, you guys, here's me sick again. I am super duper, super duper sick. I look terrible. And then here's me sick again. Ugh. I just feel awful, you guys. I do not feel good. And so 
I obviously know what it's like to be sick and it's the worst thing ever. You know, it is the worst thing ever. And I do believe he was sick. That said, uh, if I were to, I don't know, uh, let's say go to this one and then uh, let's see if I can zoom in at all. Uh, look at his socks. Okay. Those are, those are nice socks. You know, they're hearts, probably Layla Annalise. Not bad. Let's, uh, let's go to this one. Let me uh, go ahead and take a look. Oh, wait a minute. Those look familiar. Um, mm, all right. Well, I'm sure it's a coincidence. Let's just go and let's check him out at the hospital. But, uh, oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Was he wearing the same socks in all of these? Was he wearing the same socks in all of these? Is it possible that he staged these, you know, different outfits, but the same socks like, oh no. Oh man. You know, I feel like it's a little bit weird. He was wearing the same socks. Is it possible that Layla Annalise suggested that they do a photo shoot of how sick he was? Because if you're going to do that, you know what you should do. Don't just change the outfit. You should change the socks. You know, you should change the socks. Now, that being said, uh, like I said, he, he really was sick. I'm not questioning whether or not he was sick. I am just questioning the uh, attention to detail when they do publicity stunts like this. You know, I'm just saying someone who didn't know for sure you were sick might question whether or not you had faked the entire thing. And that would be super embarrassing because you'd have to ask yourself, like, why would they do that? Just like, you know, you'd ask yourself about the moon landing. Why would they fake the photos? Because it's proven that they faked some of the photos. It's like, well, if they really went, why would they do that? Well, maybe it's because when the sun is hitting the moon directly, it's around 350 degrees on the surface of the moon. But when it's not hitting it directly, it's like negative 350 degrees. So I don't know, not really any good options in terms of humans being there. Also, you'd want to ask yourself, like, how come no humans have gone back since we did? No manned missions whatsoever? Weird. I don't know. Uh, you know, just things I think about. What's the, what's the furthest that humans have flown off of Earth aside from the moon landings? Uh, right around 600 miles. Oh, wow. That's really impressive. How far is the moon? Uh, around 230,000 miles away. I'm sorry. Go over that one more time. 230,000. And the next furthest mission that humans have ever done per science is 600 miles. That's right. Furthest one is 600 miles, except for the moon landings that we did in the 1960s and 70s. Yeah, that's right. With the computing power of a TI-82 calculator. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. And it was 230,000 miles away. Yeah, that's right. Well, I can think of one reason why we might have faked the photographs. I'm just saying, <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, I would never say it out loud because I wouldn't want people to think I'm crazy. Let me tell you a story before we go back to Ian Gary. Rock and roll, my man. You ever hear the story about the Americans that came back and gave a moon rock to Denmark to commemorate the moon landing after the moon landing in the 1960s? Uh, no, I don't remember that. That was way before my time. Oh, okay, well that happened. That happened. And then did you know that in 2008 or 2009 that someone at that museum that had it decided, you know, moon landing story is a little fishy. I'm going to go get this thing tested. And when they took it and got it tested, the moon rock that the United States gave to Denmark is actually petrified wood. Petrified wood. Petrified wood. So the United States gave something to Denmark saying it was a moon rock from the moon landings which then subsequently 40 years later turned out to be petrified wood. That is exactly what happened. I can think of some reasons why they might have faked those pictures. Speaking of photographs, let's talk about what Joff Neal could do going into his press conference with Layla Anna Lee and Ian Gary. Because if you recall, the direction that they went was, let's take Joff Neal's mug shot and put it on a t-shirt. I do recall uh, Ariel Helwani thought that this was really over the line. And Joff Neal was like, yeah, I don't really care about that. I'm going to fight him. And I was like, really, Ariel? Really? That's over the line. Putting a mug shot on a t-shirt. Almost makes me feel like your entire position is a little bit disingenuous about trash talk since who cares if he put a mug shot on a t-shirt? The only person that should care is Joff Neal. And since Joff Neal seems to not care, I need to advise him on what he could put on a t-shirt 
going into his press conference, okay? Now, when I say advise him, I mean, if you're friends with Joff Neal, you need to tell him to do this because bam, son, bam, son. How about we get into a little uh, little picture spread of Layla Annalie's wedding to Ian's nutritionist. You guys may have heard that her ex-husband is Ian's nutritionist and there happened to be a lot of photographs on the internet of the two of them in, uh, in deep, passionate love. So yeah, there are their matching tattoos. You could certainly put that onto a t-shirt. I think that would be funny. Or you could go with the, uh, you know, taking vows in front of God that they will together find a young athlete to extort and exploit. And no matter whatever happens, no matter what we tell the world, the two of us will always make passionate love to each other behind the back of whatever young new husband that she takes on. That's what those papers say. See, you don't know that, but I do. What's what's on that paper right there that they are making vows to is if Layla Anna Lee, if you ever marry a new man that's much younger than you and much stupider than both of you, then you promise to always make passionate love to this man right here that you're holding hands with behind the back of your new husband. She was like, I do. I promise I will. And then we got this one. Oh my God. Oh, we're having so much fun. We're having the best time ever. Oh, hmm. Yeah, I might put that on a t-shirt if it were me. <laughs> oh my God, there's so many options. Jeez, look at all these. You know, this one, might put this one on there. Although she might like it a little bit too much because her legs are looking really good. It's like, uh, oh man, she's all, it, actually, she just looks really good in that picture in general. I would do that one. I would do that one. Here is your nutritionist with his hand up your wife's dress as she passionately holds onto his neck for dear life. And I just shudder thinking about where he's carrying her right now and what they're going to do next. I'm just saying, if it were me, that goes on the that goes on the t-shirt, Joff Neal. So you guys uh, feel free to do with that information what you will. That's my suggestion uh, would be that, you know, because I'm a goddamn genius. And in real life, someone else suggested that to me. Thank you to whoever suggested that because it was absolutely brilliant. Let me see if there are any other good ones. Oh, here's one. Uh, we could do this one. Obviously, this is always a good option. What are you doing with your dress? It's like, well, I'm lifting it up for my man. You know, definitely going to be doing a lot of that later. <laughs> oh, my God. This is so ridiculous, dude. This is so ridiculous. I don't even know if I can put this up. Uh, now, let's talk about something serious because let's talk Colby Covington, who is calling out Layla Anna Lee and Ian Gary. He launches another attack on Ian Gary's marriage, says he would be honored to settle beef in the octagon. Covington may has found his new narrative. Listen to me, Colby Covington. Hear what I'm saying to you, all right? If you really want to go hard at this couple, you need to be hitting on Layla Anna Lee. Instead of making fun of Ian Gary, don't, don't just make fun of Ian Gary. Every single time you talk about this, you tell her that you'll give her a better deal. I already made it. He's on the come up. You are beautiful. You hit on her every time. You don't just chastise her. You hit on her. Chastise Ian, call him a cuck, and then you hit on Layla Annalie. That's way funnier, dude. It's way, way funnier. But nonetheless, anyway, so they are saying that uh, chaos has clearly had a plan in mind uh, since that said that fight was the easiest of his career. Several excuses, yada yada yada. Okay, so bottom line is he called out he called out Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and Colby being a man of the people. He heard what the reaction to that was. He's all oh, this is not a good angle, you know. Not everybody, you know, it, it, as well as he does managing his career, people make missteps. Calling out forty year old Wonderboy coming off a loss was a misstep, and so he went all right, never mind. People won't respect that win, even if I get it. Wonderboy is also injured, you know? So I'm going for the big dog. I'm going for Ian Gary. Great call. Great call. Scary fight. Scary, scary fight. He's much more aggressive than Leon. Leon might be a little bit, you know, Leon's probably harder to get to, but Ian is just as fast, just as technical, with probably more power and... He's more aggressive. So that is a scary fight. Now, more aggressive might give Colby the opportunity to get him to the ground. So who knows? But nonetheless, it's a great call out because that fight will be off the hook. It puts Ian Gary in position to fight for the title if he wins. And it puts Colby right back in there to fight for the title if he does, if, if Colby wins. Why would he get to fight for the title when Ian Gary's only number 10? Oh, I forgot. We don't understand how this world works anymore. Oh, we forgot. 
we forgot how this this business works because it's totally all about the rankings. The rankings are irrelevant. If you haven't figured that out yet, you don't understand the business that we're talking about. Rankings are irrelevant. Okay. For the most part. Um, But nonetheless, let's continue. All right. So here is what Colby had to say. He said, I found out that this had happened. The girl was selling a book called WAG, which means wife and girlfriend. So Colby hasn't even looked it up because it's called How to Be a Wag, which is even funnier that he has no idea what he's talking about. He's just taking sound bites. So she was promoting that she had a, a boyfriend and she had a husband. It shouldn't be allowed. It's pretty nasty behavior. That is not at all. Okay, maybe he's doing this on purpose. That's definitely not what it means. Uh, how to Be a Wag is uh, is How to Be a Wife and Girlfriend, wife, Wives and Girlfriends of a Professional Football Star. I think he probably already knows that. But if he doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, not excited. He was pretty angry. I think he probably wants to settle the differences in the octagon. And it just so happens, I like the I like to fight in the octagon. So if he if it happened, if it needs to happen one day, I'd be honored to settle that. So he's like, "What's up, Ian Gary? You got a problem with what I said? Let's get down like a clown, Charlie Brown." You know. So listen, I love that fight. I would love to see it. I think it would be hilarious, and uh, I think it's good for both guys. I think it puts both guys in a position for a title shot if they win. Now let's switch gears and talk Conor McGregor. I got two things to tell you about Conor. Well, three things. The first one is that Dana is going to be meeting with Conor McGregor this week in the Middle East, and they're going to be talking about when and who and what Conor is coming back to and when and what and who and what and when and who. So that's exciting. They're going to get something together. We don't have any news beyond that. But I do want to talk about this because someone sent me this. Look at this. Look at this girl on Instagram. This is a big skanky girl and when i say big i'm talking look at those legs son this is a big thick girl and look at who follows her that's conor mcgregor he's a bad bad boy man this guy loves megan fox he loves her enough that he'll throw a drink on mgk he loves these big thicky thick thick girls this is too thick for me man this is way too thick for me man but i'm just saying uh also here check this out So this is what Connor put up on the interweb uh, on Instagram last night. So, I mean, I could play the clip, but why? You know, (laughs) the gist is he put this on his own story and it says Connor McGregor decides he doesn't want to fight Michael Chandler anymore. And then it goes, Dana White, get out of here, Chandler. So, yeah. You know what? Actually, let me, let me actually put this on. Let me put this on for a second, because now that I actually just looked at that, it's like, all right, so what is he saying? Is he saying that he doesn't want to fight him, or is he saying that if he if he decides he doesn't want him? All right, so watch this. See that door over there? That's the door you go out right now. Yes, sir. Have a good See that door over there? That's the door you go out right now. Yes, sir. Have a good Okay, you know what? All right, all right. Okay, so I retract what I said. So what I thought that he was saying he doesn't want to fight Chandler anymore. What he's actually saying is, if he decided he didn't want to fight Chandler, then Dana would throw Chandler out the door. Okay, that makes way more sense. Well, actually, I mean, any of it makes perfect sense because it's Connor. But uh, that at least is less kind of shitty. You know, like, obviously Chandler's been waiting forever. It's like, if you say at this point you don't want to fight him, it's like, come on, dude, come on. But saying, if I wanted to get rid of you, I could because Dana would get rid of you in one second. (sighs) Yeah. Listen. I don't love that fight for Connor, man. I really don't. But Chandler is such a good dude. If he knocks out Connor, it would be bananas for him. But man, after waiting for this long, it's like, I never thought I would say this, but the fight is not that hype anymore. You know what I mean? It's just not. It's like, man, (laughs) how long we gotta wait, dude? How long do we have to wait for this fight? It's absolutely endless i don't know what to say except we have been waiting for ever forever you know and now nate diaz is coming back nate diaz is talking about doing leon edwards at ufc 300 can you imagine if they did that can you imagine if leon edwards was like give me nate diaz i want nate diaz rematch and they actually did it that was the headline for ufc 300 can you imagine how pissed Bilal Muhammad would be if they gave Nate Diaz a title shot at UFC 300 over him. 
just because Leon's all, I want that fight back because he clipped me at the end of the, that would be, in the history of the UFC, that would be the craziest thing that they'd ever done to a fighter, I think. I think that would be probably the most fucked up thing that had ever happened. I don't think there's any scenario where that happens, but they'd be, and, and look, they're, they're like, listen, man, Nate won his last fight. Nate won his last fight by submission, man. It's not like he's completely unfounded for him to get a title shot. He almost knocked out Leon, and then he won by submission over Tony Ferguson. I think he deserves a title shot. Bilal, you're going to have to sit one out. That would be so fucked. You know what I mean? That would be so fucked. Anyway, that's what I got. I love you guys. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. Tell your friends. Bye.